is a two-time NBA champion with the Miami Heat. In the 2012 Finals, he made seven three-pointers in a crucial Game 5 against the Thunder. Then in the 2013 Finals, he made the highlight reels by hitting a three-pointer in Game 6 with one shoe. We welcome to the desk 16-year NBA vet Mike Miller. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Welcome. We got a lot Good to, to get, you, bro. get into you. with you. All right, All let's right. get right into it. So you played in four of the last five finals with LeBron James. His Cavs haven't dropped a game this postseason. The Warriors currently the favorites to win it all. But, Mike, should the Cavs be the favorites? Uh, as it sits right now, I have the Cavs as, as my favorites. I think, they, I think they can win it, and it's for multiple reasons. I think most obvious is the way they're playing right now and the way they're shooting the ball right now. Can they sustain that? That's, uh, that's going to be we'll, – we'll, we'll soon find out. But that's one of the reasons. The second, reasons is, the second reason is you have to win 16 games to win a championship. Right now they're halfway there. I just feel like the most games they will play between then and you know, the finals will be a total of you know, 13, 14 games. That's if Miami or Toronto can get one or two games, which I don't know if they can. So you're looking at a fresh, energetic team that makes the NBA finals, who's shooting it the way they're shooting it. Um, those two things are really strong. And then my final one is just LeBron. I just don't know. I just don't believe in my heart that he can go there again and lose. And so when you add all that stuff up, I have them as my favorites for what it's worth. I just I think they're the team to beat right now. I really do. Interesting. Stephen A. Talk to me about what kind of challenge you think the Miami Heat will pose if indeed they get past Toronto and LeBron has to go up against his old team going back uh, to, to South Florida in order to do it. Well, I think well, I think Miami does win that series, and I, and I think that what it will be is his going back is going to be interesting. The dynamic between his relationship between him and D-Wade, I think someone said it maybe even on this show, is, is very similar to the Isaiah Thomas Magic Johnson, right? Is where, that'll, where, where will that go? Um, outside of that, the biggest thing that they're going to get, Miami has a structure, defensive structure, and they're going to muck the game up. Um, they've always been great defending the three. It's obviously what Cleveland has been great at in this postseason, and, uh, you know, shooting, make, making 18, 19 threes a game or whatever it is. So they will bring that challenge defensively. Um, at, the, at the end of the game, they have two guys, to me, um, that can win too, which is D Wade and Joe Johnson are, are pretty good closers. A real D Wade's a really good closer. So if they can muck it up and keep the games close, that's the challenge they'll have. Ultimately, I think uh, Cleveland has too much, uh, but we'll see. Mm. So you were always one of LeBron's favorite teammates. In fact, if memory serves, he took out a full-page ad when, when, when they decided to cut you for financial reasons, right? Yes. He, he, he was so thankful of all that you had brought to that team and to him personally. So, so give us your insight. You obviously have a good feel for LeBron. How much has he changed what, when, when you watch him now on television versus that guy you helped win his first ring, obviously, in 2012? What, what evolution have you seen? What maturity have you seen in LeBron? Uh, I think he's changed a lot, but, you know, everyone changes when they go through things. I've, I've talked about this a lot. I mean, things just don't happen overnight. It's almost like the Cleveland team now, same as when we put our Miami team together. When you have expectations, it, it makes things tough because without, with expectations comes pressure, right? And, and there's no way of getting around that. Um, and, and you get criticized through things. I think criticism's good. I think you learn from criticism. Um, either you're right and you can be stronger in what you're doing, or you can you you see that they're wrong or they're right and you can learn from it. Um, so I think he's he's done that. He's gone through a bunch of stuff. He's 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 had to listen to a bunch of things. He's lost. He's lost championships. People talk about his legacy all the time. What he has done, I think, the best through this is he started to trust people more. Started to trust his teammates more. And, and that comes with being around the. Guy guys more that's why I always you know the San Antonio Spurs are the perfect example that's why they're so good they've been around each other so long they trust each other so much and trust is a you throw it around really easily but it's hard to gain and until you're around those guys a lot and they can constantly count on you to do what your job is it, 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 they work both ways so you got to trust them to do their job and they got to do their job so I think the biggest thing is he's trusted his teammates more and relied on them more and and, and I, I think that's really helped him it really has I want you to chime in about this whole Chris Bosh situation from this perspective. Chris Bosh obviously wanted to play, uh, felt that he was ready to go. I'm sure you're familiar with your former teammate and your friends, uh, you know, blood clot issues. Mm -hmm. um, Miami obviously thought otherwise. 
ultimately they reached an accord where there was a, a statement released by the Heat where they said that us and Chris Bosh have agreed that he'd missed the rest of the postseason. I'm interested in knowing because in 2013, obviously, you were let go. They used their amnesty on you to let you go and move on. LeBron James was not happy about that felt that you know the money was there it was available he certainly didn't get the max in order for you looking forward to you getting some money some of that money so you could stay on board you've got those out there who are speculating that to some degree that has something to do with why Bosch is sitting out right now I want to know as a former player of the Miami Heat what you make of all of that uh, it's a tough one because I, I understand both sides of it and without knowing in detail what's actually happening what's what's going on with Chris it makes it difficult I understand where, where Chris is at. He wants to play. You can't ever blame a guy for wanting to play. You, you, you know, the hardest thing without knowing the details of it is, 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 is it life-threatening? Is it something that can affect him long-term? The thing I'll give credit with Miami, they've been through this. They've been down this road before with Alonzo Mourning. So they have, some, they have a little bit of, of you know, information that we don't have, but they also have a little, you know, they have some ability to look back at what they did with Alonzo. Either was it right or wrong? I don't know. Um, but I think both sides are, are equally right on that. I mean, it's, it's really a tough one without knowing exactly what's going on. It's a really a difficult one to answer because I respect why he wants to play, but I also respect the guy to take care of him long term as well. So well, it's a I tough one. Skip, I'm glad he said that because that's the point that I wanted to make. I see, I see both sides of it. I, I look at them looking at it as we're looking out for Chris Bosch's health. He's also getting his money, but we're also looking out for the long-term health of the business of the Miami Heat. I can respect that. I was just wondering whether or not players felt the same way. I, I think I think this way. I mean, it has to be. You have to look at all sides of this one, and without knowing it all, I think that both sides are right. Yeah. Stephen A. and I have run out of adjectives to describe what Steph Curry continues to do and continues to amaze us with. You've been around a long time watching this game. Put it in, in big picture perspective for us, what he's accomplished over these two years winning back-to-back -back MVPs. Well, last night was epic. epic. Um, so that's the best way i describe that. Um, what he's done... It, I just talked about this about 45 minutes ago. What he's done, last year when he made 200 and some odd threes and he broke the record, I was like, that's amazing. Because I've been in this league a long time and, and when I was chasing to come close to that one year, I was like, this is unbelievable. So he does that and you're thinking, okay, let's see what happens the next year. Now he throws 402 on him or whatever it is. So the question now you ask is, where does he go from here? Like, to me, he's the best shooter that I've ever seen. And I played with Ray. I played against Reggie. I played, you know. So the reason, the reason for that though is I, he takes tough ones. Every game they're game planning to take away threes from him, and he shoots it at such a high clip. And, and that to me, I just can't. I really can't wait to see where it goes from here. It's like that's that's the exciting thing as a well, shooter. Like, where can you go from here? Six hundred. That, and that's where I'm coming from. I I I I gotta chime in and ask you this question, Mike. You just finished saying that to you, in your eyes, Cleveland's the favorite. How can they be when Steph Curry is on the floor with, this, with these kind of capabilities? You still feel that Cleveland have the, it has the edge if Steph Curry is on the floor like this? I do. I do because I think you guys actually debated this a couple days ago on this show. Um, I think as a whole, now if they can sustain it as a whole, Cleveland shoots the ball better. Now, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson are probably the best two shooters on the floor, but as a whole, Cleveland shoots the ball better. And one of the differences is, to me, Steph Curry is and Draymond Green, obviously, are their playmakers. The other side, LeBron James is, and Kyrie are their playmakers. LeBron James is on the, on the floor at all times, is probably the worst three-point shooter. Shooting it better in the playoffs, but probably the worst three-point shooter. So he's able to create and do his job for others without, without the expense of being able to shoot the three. So I, I, just, I just believe that LeBron is not going to lose, and that's, what I'm, I'm, I, that's more what I'm betting on. The way they're shooting, the way LeBron, i just betting on LeBron is not going to lose. And, and it's, it's up for debate because obviously what Steph is doing is incredible. All right. Well, the Cavs never lost in the playoffs when all three, Kyrie Love and LeBron, have been on the court. So we shall see. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.